How's it going? My name is Daniel from MM Toots, and today I'm going to show you how to remove background from inside Photoshop. So as you can see in front of me, I do already have a photo open inside Photoshop. And the first thing we need to decide is what kind of background we're dealing with. Because right now, as you can actually see, I'm not using a white background. I'm actually using a kind of grayish color, which is going to be much harder to remove than a white background. So I just want to do this because I want to prove to you that my method is going to take care of the background, even if it's not completely white. Now, I do also want to mention that if you want the project file for this episode or any future episodes, then you can find them on my Patreon, which I'm going to link to in the description of this video here. So go ahead and check that out if you want this episode's uh, lesson files. Now, the way we're going to remove the background from this photo here is by choosing the difference in lighting and in color inside the photo. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go inside the channels tab that we have right next to the layers. And inside the channels tab, you can see we have a couple of different layers going on. We have an RGB layer. We have a red layer, a green layer, and a blue layer. So what we want to do is we want to choose the one that has the highest difference in lighting inside the photo. And then we want to duplicate that specific layer. So right now you can see that I do actually think that blue has the highest one in difference. It's definitely not going to be red. Uh, so we're going to take blue and I'm going to duplicate it. After duplicating it, I can make changes to this layer without affecting the actual photo. So I'm going to say we want to click Control L or Command L if you're on Mac. And then you can see we can adjust the levels in order to even more increase the difference in colors, or sorry, not in colors, but in lighting inside this photo here. So what I want to do is first of all, I want to zoom in to just prove a point to you, is I want to go ahead and turn up the dark colors and turn up the light colors so we get something that has a very high contrast between the model uh, and the hair with the background. So if we were to turn up the dark colors, you can see that the picture turns darker, but we also don't want to turn up so much that we can't really see the hair clearly. As you can see, it becomes sort of pixelated and we don't want to have that. So I want to make sure that we can still see the hair in the correct way without it becoming too much of a dark color. The same thing goes for the light color if I want to turn this one up. If we get too much light, then you can see the finer hairs sort of start to disappear from the background and we don't want that to happen inside Photoshop. So I'm going to just turn it back down and I'm just gonna go and buff it up just enough just to still see the finer hairs, which is just around here. Then I'm gonna take the dark colors. And again, this is something you want to be just take your time with it and sort of figure out where exactly you need to adjust this one to. So I'm going to turn it up till around here. Then I'm going to zoom back out. And now that we created the highest amount of difference between the light and the dark colors, we can go ahead and select all the dark colors from inside this photo here. The way we do that is by going down to our layer that we created. We're going to hold down Control or Command if you're on Mac. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on the picture part of this layer here. And as you can see, we get a selection going. Now, some people like to, before they move on to the next step, is they like to paint in the model in here, let's actually go and deselect everything. They like to paint in the model in black to make sure that we don't have any sort of white going on inside uh, the model here. So inside the silhouette that we have going on. So what I want to do is not that specific move because it's going to make it harder for us afterwards. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the layer like I showed you the first time. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to layers. And inside layers, we want to make sure we first of all unlock the layer so we can actually edit it. And then we want to create a mask based off the selection here. Now the way we do that is by going down to the mask uh, button we have at the bottom here. And I just want to show you if I were to click it, we choose the wrong part of the picture. So now we actually removed everything except for the background. So what we want to do instead by going back is click Control Shift I or Command Shift I if you're on Mac to invert the selection. And then we can actually go ahead and create the mask again. So now that I created the mask, you can see that we deselected the background. But wait, something is going on here because the model also sort of disappeared. So the way we fix this is by selecting the brush tool and then we want to make sure that we have the layer mask selected, which we can do so in the right side here. Right now I selected the layer and now I selected the layer mask just so you know how to do that. And then I want to sort of paint in with white color the areas that I don't want to disappear. So as you can see, now the model is sort of fading back in again. But this is not really the best way to look at it because I can't really tell in between the hairs what part is transparent and which one is not. So I'm going to hold down Alt 
and then click on the layer mask we have over on the side here and now you can see we get a black and white um, what do you call it? a view of this specific picture here so now we can actually start filling in uh, the model or in, uh, what do you call it? inside the silhouette of the model and we can also see that the background over here is actually not completely disappeared yet which is also a problem so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I also want to make sure we don't have a soft brush tool selected because that's going to make it difficult once we do actually paint inside the silhouette because then we might get something like this going on the edge over here. So I want to make sure we have a hard brush tool selected. By the way, a shortcut that I can show you is if you hold down Alt and then click the right mouse button, by dragging to left and right, you're going to increase the size of the brush. And by going up and down, you can increase or decrease the softness of the brush, which is a really nice shortcut to know inside Photoshop. It's a shortcut that I learned very late while I was studying multimedia design. So this is a really good one for you to know if you don't know it by now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint in with white in between this uh, or inside the silhouette of the person just so we have something going on that is not transparent inside the person here and again this is the part where you want to take your time and I'm just going to go ahead and just rush through it because I don't want to take too much time for this episode because I know people tend to not click on videos if they see the timestamp is 15 minutes because I spent way too long uh, trying to paint in between the, the silhouette here so I'm just going to try and do it fairly quick compared to what you guys are going to spend on, on picturing in or painting in uh, the person here. I'm just going to go down, keep going, keep going. As you can see, the shirt here is also sort of uh, transparent. We want to be completely white. I think I might have, actually, no, that was fine. Just going to go to the other side, paint that in take my time well not too much time because this is a YouTube video just decrease it so we can get in between here and now that I painted in the silhouette the next thing I want to do is I want to paint in the outside dark area so I want to select a black color and again I just used the not the shortcut that would actually have been faster and I'm just gonna go and paint in the outside as well because you don't want to have a new color background or photo background or something and then we see part of the original photo uh, showing uh, you know on top of the one behind it now i'm not going to get too close to the hair because as you can see we have some of the finer hair and if we were to go too close and just sort of cut it off it's going to look not as good as we could so what i want to do is i just want to get as close to the hairs or at least the fine hairs without actually painting on them just going to go ahead and go up here paint at the top paint down there don't get too close and I think there we go go to the other side do the same thing just get close to the hairs without too close and then I'll take the outside again I'm, I'm going sort of fast here but you want to take your time about this boom boom there we go and just a bit closer to the person paint the corners the corners are always the ones that uh, never completely disappears when you want to uh, remove the uh, background so make sure you go for the corners as well now i'm just going to go ahead and uh, do a small trick here that i want to show you if you want to get closer to the hairs because right now you can see we have sort of a uh, we have sort of a uh, border going on uh, with the background that didn't really disappear yet so what you can do is you can increase the softness of the brush and then you can get closer to it because then we don't get this hard edge that looks weird on the model and again I might look really concentrated right now because I'm trying to do my best here on time so I don't take too long I joked around with saying that this episode will probably be 15 minutes and people are not going to click on it but it's probably still going to end up 15 minutes which I hope it's not going to be because like I said then people don't want to watch this episode okay there we go I'm gonna do the same thing around I'm gonna move fairly quick here again take your time Stop the video if you have to and then continue watching once you get to uh, the part where you selected everything the way it needs to be selected. There we go. Go around the edges, going around the edges. And I think we're just about there. Again, I'm sort of painting a little bit into the white silhouette part by mistake because I'm being quick about it. And there we go. So now that we did this, we can actually go ahead. I think I might have missed a spot down here at the bottom. 
or is it my screen? It might just be my monitor. <laughs> and sometimes it tricks you. So now that we have this select, uh, selected, we can go back into uh, the original photo by holding down Alt again and clicking on the mask we have inside the layers panel. As you can see, we have the model showing inside our Photoshop software. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, move it to the bottom, and I'm just gonna go and choose some kind of color, like we can choose a green color, fill in the background, and as you can see, we now have the background removed and we can in, uh, include our own background into the photo and have something else showing instead. So this is how you remove background from a model inside Photoshop fairly quickly. Uh, you can't do it much quicker than this unless you want to uh, do a much, you know, much more bad job about it. Now, I hope you learned something from this episode because there was quite a few tricks that I used that you can actually use on other examples that you might want to do something inside Photoshop, such as using the channels over here in order to choose part of an image depending on color or lighting. So there's a lot of tricks that I showed you here. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next episode.